<sighs> Hi, my name's Joey, and I have dinoflagellates. <laughs> that sounds, that's funny. That sounds ridiculous. <laughs> What's up everyone, welcome back to the Coral Reef Talk. In today's episode, we're talking about dinos. And no, I'm not talking about dinosaurs, I'm talking about dinoflagellates. Dinoflagellates, flagellates, flagellate, dinos in the reef tank. Okay, so just when I thought everything was going great with the reef tank, picking up new corals, things were growing, things were starting to take off and the tank was looking great, I started to notice some brown specks and uh, just algae looking stuff over the sand bed and if you've been in the reef hobby for a long time then you know what it is right away if you're brand new to the reefing hobby uh, this stuff can be hard to get rid of but this hobby is so much fun that it's worth the time to take to try to get rid of it and to understand exactly what dinos are in the reef tank so today's episode is a quick touch on what type of dinos I'm facing and what I'm doing to outcompete them and to get rid of them. So when researching the topic and finding different solutions for the aquarium that I wanted to try my hand at, I came across a couple great resources. Uh, one of those resources is a video that uh, Devin from Reef Dudes posted where they talked about a certain method um, step by step on what you can do uh, to get rid of dinos and it's a specific recipe that you follow. And then a really great resource for you guys that are fighting the same issue would be uh, Moki, the Inappropriate Reefer, has a great video. He's tackled dinos multiple times and he has an awesome video that uh, he shows you how you can ID your dinos. And we're gonna touch on that a little bit later in the episode, but he's got some great information about certain bacterias that he used and how he combated uh, the issue. Um, and then there's also Dr. Tim. Now, Dr. Tim is well known uh, in uh, the reefing industry and the hobby for putting out things like Dr. Tim's One and Only, uh, Dr. Tim's um, Refresh, um, different bacteria that can help your reef tank. So he laid out his instructions on how to compete dinos in the reef tank, a combination of Dr. Tim's Refresh and Waste Away to help combat your dinos. Now, when taking all of this stuff into account, um, what I've come across is that you need to replenish the bacteria in your reef tank that could have been skimmed out. You could be over skimming your reef tank. That could be a reason why your bacteria is in low numbers and they're not strong enough to outcompete the dinos that are forming on your sand bed and just taking over uh, because dinos start to take over your sand bed. They can cover up corals, choke them out, uh, similar to having algae blooms and just algae engulfing your corals and choking them out. It's a similar situation, except they're a little bit harder to deal with. Uh, now, Dr. Tim recommends starting off with a three-day blackout, uh, wrap something around your tank, turn off your lights, um, because dinos, like we said earlier, are photosynthetic, so that helps uh, lower their numbers. And then after that, you're dosing um, an amount of refresh and then some waste away over the course of so, of so many days. And then you do a water change. And then if you need to, you repeat the steps. So that's the basic course of action when handling dinos and it leads to some very promising results. So what am I doing after all of that? So I have been dosing Microbacter 7 and I've been using Waste Away. Now, why didn't I use Refresh? Why didn't I start with Dr. Tim's method? Before I found that method or even read up on that, I had already purchased Microbacter 7. People have had great results using Microbacter 7 and Microbacter Clean from Brightwell Aquatics. Um, so just adding bacteria to the tank to create that biodiversity in the aquarium. That's what I'm trying to accomplish and I think I'm making progress. Okay, so here's the current state of the tank. You can see that the glass has a slight film on it. That is because dosing Microbacter 7 and then dosing Waste Away, I have uh, some biodiversity going on. I have things growing on the glass and you can see the dinos are really blooming right down there. And the dinos are going crazy over here. Now, 
I am losing some corals unfortunately due to this um, and I'm not too happy about that uh, but I'm trying to combat the issue now the dinos look a little lighter in some areas than they have been and you can also see on the back of the tank there we got some algae forming back there as well so I'm going to kind of let that stuff settle we got things growing up on the pump and I'm going to go ahead and let those take hold and let the tank battle these dinos and out compete. Yellow Tang is doing great. Short update on him. He's doing fine. All the fish are actually doing okay. Um, I did add a six line wrasse recently and like the day after he was introduced to the tank, he disappeared. So I uh, have no idea what's going on with him. Another thing about dinos is that it is toxic. So you can see snails flipped over and this big zebra snail, he's been flipped over, but I think he's trying to flip himself back upright using that frag plug. So um, yeah, so this is the current state of the aquarium right now. So I have this major spot right here and I have this major spot over here. The zoas, the zoanthids, despite all this, are still uh, doing great. You can see the snail upside down through the fog there. So this is still the early stages. This is a week and a half or so of progress fighting dinos. And I've heard people say that it's taken them three weeks and they've defeated dinos all the way up to three months. Um, so they can be hard to battle. But I think I'm at the stage now uh, according to Dr. Tim's instructions to do a water change. Um, so I'm actually going to try to siphon out as much of those dinos as I can, see if I can clean up the sand bed, and then we'll go from there. So this is the day after the water change and you can see that it's they're still present but there's very light specks of them and I mean it looks pretty good here but that's after siphoning the sand bed and here's the look at day two you can see that they're starting to grow in numbers again um, so this is why it can be kind of an uphill battle because they just keep coming back so I think I'm going to add more bacteria and do more aggressive water changes to help keep the numbers down. Okay, now I mentioned there's a way to identify what type of dinos you have, whether you have the ones that are in your water column that you can easily remove with a UV or the ones that uh, just stay on your sand bed or on the substrate. And an easy way to do that is by picking up a microscope. Now you might say, do I really need to get a microscope? And to that I would say, yeah, they're pretty cool. You can see microscopic organisms that live in your reef tank. How cool is that to check them out? And I'll also say it's pretty inexpensive compared to what we spend in this hobby. Now you can pick up a pocket microscope off of Amazon for $20. Now this guy is pretty good at seeing things. You can use your phone. Um, it comes with an attachment to put right over the top here. And then you can look down and see uh, what type of dinos you have. We're going to take a look at what I saw uh, with this pocket scope in just a minute. Now I will say I did need a second set of hands to help me hold this and to keep the phone steady and balanced, um, but it worked out quite well. All right, so once I got it focused on a piece of the sand, I can see dinos right away. Uh, now once I zoom in here, you can get a better look at 
the type of dinos that they are, and that's determined by their shape. Now there's um, Ostriopsis, which is the kind that can get into your water column, and they can be uh, taken out with a UV sterilizer. These, however, to me look like Amphidinium dinos, uh, which are common on your sand bed, and that's uh, the brown stuff that's covering your sand bed. You can see them cruising around here. It's, I mean, it's really neat to look at them under a microscope, but we got to get rid of these guys. Okay, so I got a request in the comments to show the reef tank with just the LED lights. So I'm going to show you the whole preview of the light setup while I talk about what I've done to fight these dinos. So to be clear, I started off with Microbacter 7, started dosing that into the aquarium. Then I came across Dr. Tim's method for fighting dinos in the reef tank using refresh and waste away. And he recommended a three day blackout in the beginning. Now I did not follow that three day blackout because I have three big green bubble tip anemones that I didn't want to have them walk across the tank. Um, I was a little unsure if they would move during that process so I did not want that to happen. So I just lowered the intensity of the LED lights and I turned off the T5s uh, during that phase of the process and I kept uh, the LEDs on and the T5s off. Uh, throughout the process so after around nine days I believe it was that I did uh, the initial water change um, and then a few more days after that it says if you need to to start the process over again so that's where I'm at right now and I picked up some refresh and waste away some more waste away so I'm repeating the process right now so I'm gonna add more bacteria and then probably do more aggressive water changes get a bigger siphon hose so I can siphon the sand bed a little bit better. So that's where I'm at currently and I will be sure to share my progress. Quick side note, some updates on some other things that are going on. Uh, Printed Reef sent me some cool products to check out so I'm going to be making a video about them very soon. Um, it's a cool little holder that can hold your SPS frags in the rock almost like the rock holder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a video about Printed Reef. You can check that out somewhere up here. Also, uh, some other products that I wanna share with you guys. Have you seen the, the flip mat mitt, flip mat, the flipper, this thing from Flipper? This thing is pretty awesome uh, when it comes to cleaning your tank. Now, Flipper is a great company. They make the flipper magnet that you can clean your glass with, and I really like them a lot, so, uh, yeah, we'll take a look at that in a later episode as well. I just want to throw that out there. I got some things in the works. I know I haven't been posting as often, but yeah, I'm going to get to that real soon. Okay, so that was a lot to get through, um, but that's this is where I'm at. This is what I'm going through right now, uh, finding gynos in the reef tank, and many of you are struggling with the same problem as well. So I've went ahead and put in the description below those resources that I was talking about, uh, Inappropriate Reefer, great video, great information. Like I said, he's beaten it multiple times. He is a great resource uh, for checking out things about dinos. Um, also, if you're not subscribed to him, go ahead and subscribe to him as well. Uh, Devin from Reef Dudes, he had a great conversation about dinos and a certain process on how to uh, handle it as well. So there's a lot of information out there about tackling dinos in the reef tank. Um, it's just about absorbing it, taking it in, um, understanding it, and discerning, uh, deciphering which way or which route you're going to choose for your reef aquarium at home. So many different ways to do so many different things in this hobby, and there's so much information out there that sometimes it can be hard to navigate it all. So hopefully I can point you in the right direction with some of these sources as well as the information from Dr. Tim. Uh, so hopefully I can point you in the right direction to help you in your tank uh, because that's what I, I like about making videos here on YouTube is that I can post something sharing my experience and what I'm doing and um, maybe save you uh, the headache and the heartbreak of dealing with some of this stuff if you know how to be proactive about it and um, find a method that can help you with your reef tank. Uh, so that's really why I do what I do. That's why I share 
these videos with you. So I hope you uh, like, like this video. Um, if you do, let me know about it in the comments below. I love to hear your questions, your concerns, your comments. Um, I, I love to check out what you guys have going on in your reef aquarium because uh, this reef hobby is so vast and so awesome. So many different things you can do, like I said. So I love checking out everything and anything reef related. Um, so go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something uh, through all my rambling. But um, again, thank you so much for checking out the Coral Reef Talk. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, everything that you do. Happy reefing, and I'll see you next time on the Coral Reef Talk.